as we said, today is Groundhog's Day, and unfortunately, Punk Satorny Phil did see his shadow. You know what that means? What? Six more weeks of a this. A longer crap. winter. Six more weeks of this crap. Why can't we just get a break and like, you know what? He doesn't see his shadow. We're going to get an early spring. You know, we can't get a break this year. So what, like, I don't understand it. Like, do they ask him and he tells them, I saw my shadow? I'm, <laughs> like, I'm not 100% certain, but they, they somehow they know whether he sees the shadow or not. But let me tell you something, yo, yo, <laughs> and Vanessa. I am not an expert on punks of 20 Phil, but what I do know, which is written right here in front of me, he's only right 50% of the time. So we- I'm not going to trust this guy. That sounds, like, that sounds like our weatherman. That is right. We could- Flip a coin, okay, and be just as right as Punk 20 Phil on whether or not we will be having a longer winter or not. That's hilarious. Which really leads to believe that it's just Punk 20, it's just all, seems to be all luck. Yeah. Now, Groundhog Chuck from Staten Island, he did not see his shadow, so he is predicting an early spring. And now, a fun fact about Groundhog Chuck is that he is 78% accurate. So if you're going to rely on the accuracy of a groundhog, it's Chuck over Punks of 20 Phil. Uh, I'm here for it. Everything I'm here for the, the early spring. We know a lot about groundhogs on this show. We As do. Matter, we do. I, I would say there's very few YouTube or Facebook shows that you can tune into live to find out more about groundhogs <laughs> than right here on Bradshaw Live. Now, for example, the first Groundhog Day in Punks and 20 occurred when? 1887. We know this stuff. Now, according to tradition, groundhogs come out of its hole on this day and they see their shadow, they get scared, and they run back. But if they don't run back into their hole, that means they don't see their shadow and that means spring is coming. That's, that's how they communicate it, yo That's yo. how they communicate. Oh, got you. You got it? Got you. This question is valid, though. I had never asked myself that. Like, how are we getting this response from this groundhog? Groundhog's Day became famous from the movie Groundhog's Day with Bill Murray, obviously. I don't recall really having much recollection of Groundhog's Day until that movie came out. And he just kept living the same day over and over again. Kind of like what we've been doing since mid-April of 2020 living the same day over and over again because <laughs> the pandemic is over. It's like we have a continuous Groundhog's Day. Do you feel that way, Yo-Yo? I felt like that in the beginning of the pandemic. What's but that now, movie with Leo DiCaprio, Inception? Isn't that like when you're just going in circles or something like that? Pretty much. I mean, yeah. But, like, but that's not my life anymore. You figured out a way to adapt. Yes. Yeah. And what, and it's, all, it's all in your mind, you know what I mean? Like your mind is just such a powerful organ. Your brain is so powerful. Like it could literally take over your body. So it's like, if you put yourself in the right state of mind, the sky's the limit. So I might be stuck in this apartment, but in my mind, like I'm keeping myself excited. I'm, I'm painting, I'm doing more things. I'm being creative. Like it's all how, what you do and like what you make of it. Vanessa, is there something that you did during the pandemic that- Okay, you cheers, that's quick. quick. Yes, you feel me? You feel me? <laughs> There's something that you did during the pandemic that you look back on and say, you know what? If it wasn't for this pandemic, I wouldn't have done it. We was talking about that. Yeah. Go yeah, ahead. yeah, <laughs> for sure. I mean, since I worked so many different gigs and jobs, I didn't have time to focus on one of my passions, which was like beauty blogging and all these things that I used to create so much content for. So now I didn't have the distraction of the day to day um, and I just got to hone in on my craft. So yes. There's always a silver lining in every you know bad story somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. it's right. all what you make it. It's okay. all what you make it. All right. I like the attitude. I like the, maybe I'm going to start thinking like you and I'll start remembering things that happened in my life. There you go. Before yeah. Ha. Aha. Uh -huh. Our journaling. Uh -huh. Our journaling. Aha. Uh -huh. Yo-Yo and Vanessa giving Uncle Brad some psychology. Very, very good. I there like you it. go. Let's talk a little bit about what Biden saying about immigration. He signed three executive orders today aimed at Trump's hardline immigration policies including a task force designed to reunite families separated at the United States-Mexico border. 
The task force will be chaired by the Department of Homeland Security Secretary and work across the United States government along with partners. As we previously discussed on a prior show, CNN reported that First Lady Jill Biden is expected to take an active role in the task force. It's gonna be charged with identifying all the children separated from their parents or legal guardians on the Southern border, facilitating and enabling the reunification of children with their families and providing regular reports to the president. The consequences of the zero tolerance policy, which led to the separations of thousands of families are still felt today. Now, here is just a point I wanna make because you always hear some stupid person say, well, what are these kids coming here? The kids didn't choose to come here. Right. The parents brought them here. They were together as a family at the border and then Donald Trump separated them. He separated them because he wanted to charge the parents with a crime. And now these parents got deported, children were in one jail, parents in another jail, sometimes in cages. And in the end, these children don't have parents anymore. Nobody knows where these parents are. Right, they didn't choose this. Correct. So anybody who says anything other than they have 100% empathy for these children. Right. There's something wrong with you. Yeah. This, all right. They didn't choose to come here. They didn't wake up one morning in another country and say, you know what? I'm going to take a long trek to the United States. Their parents brought them here. They brought them to the border and the government separated them. And now they have no parents. So lawyers are unable to reach 611 parents. 611 children are missing their parents right now. Jeez. Taken from their families by U.S. border officials at the demand, because it was demanded by Donald Trump between 2017 and 2018. Now, the Justice Department has rescinded the family separation, although Trump was still doing it. It is now ended completely since Biden has taken office. Cases of separated families are going to be examined on an individual basis to determine what to do with them and where to find find their parents. Now, another executive order that was signed today is going to focus on providing support to Central America to stem the flow of migrants to the U.S.-Mexico border and provide other pathways to migrate to the United States without having to journey north through very dangerous territories. We talked about on the other day caravans and how caravans get, you know, people in America in the news, caravans come, it sounds like, you know, an army of people are coming to invade. Uh -huh. The rationale behind caravans is it's such a dangerous trip from where people live to the Mexican border that they right. have to come together in groups in order to survive the trip. And then you say, well, you know, let them stay where they are. If somebody is willing to risk their life, have to band together in a caravan, live in a tent for six to nine months, leave their home, leave everything that they have behind and live in a tent on a border for six to nine months, they got to be leaving something really, really bad. Absolutely. Okay? Nobody does this on their own volition that, you know, you know, life's not bad, but I heard life's better in America. I'll go check it out. Let me go take a caravan all the way through, you know, very dangerous situation right. and live on a border for nine months. And people were doing it. It wasn't a choice. It was a necessity. Yeah. Well, one of the executive orders, and it seems smart, maybe not politically smart for Biden, but smart in terms of policy, is to send money to Central America to see if they can bolster these countries and, and make these countries more habitable, safer. And, so people and, wouldn't have to fly. Have to, you know, now why say it's, it seems like smart policy because now you don't have this problem at the border anymore. Instead of having to build a wall, how much money, you know, are they going to give? Is it going to make any much of a difference? Who knows? And why I say it's probably not very smart politically, but smart as a humanitarian. So I give him credit for it is because, you know, I'm sure his adversaries will say people are suffering in America while you're giving money to other countries. I mean, no, I'm not going to hold you. I kind of feel that like, you know, there's a lot of people suffering in, in this country 
you know, like, well, how much are we talking? And if you are going to give, are you going to also, you know, match that with, you know, because you're going to get a lot of people I'm that are going to feel. Some type of way. On this side. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm saying as a policy, as an idea, as an, right. I said, it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. What do you feel? Though, like? Politically, you know, it's, it's a loser because you just said what most people would be thinking. Yeah. Now Biden has it wants to pass a one point nine trillion dollar COVID relief package for people. Right. He wants, he wants to send fourteen hundred dollars to every person who earns less than one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year to every American. He wants to extend unemployment. He wants to stop people from getting evicted from their homes. So it's not as if. It's not as if he's doing nothing for Americans and just sending all the money, you know, to another country. Right. He is giving a one point nine trillion dollar relief package to America, which is a bigger budget than most countries have to give for the entire year. Most countries don't have a one point nine trillion dollar budget. And this is just oh, an extra thing we're going to give to Americans because luckily we're in a very wealthy country and can do it. But, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully it passes. Biden passed the third executive order today. And he's directing the Department of Homeland Security to put together a group that is going to start to review the public charge provisions for adjustments of status and visa processing. Now, when you put together a working group to go review and examine and investigate, what that means is the 944 form, the current poverty guideline regulations are going to stay in effect, certainly for the next few months. I, you know, eventually there's going to be a report. It could be in three months, four months, five months, six months, who knows, with recommendations on what to do with the poverty guidelines and all the extra uh, difficult and extraneous, unnecessarily extraneous, sometimes unfair rules that Donald Trump put in for uh, poverty guidelines. But for the time being, at least for the next few months, it's going to stay in effect what Donald Trump did. They have a working group to review it all. And hopefully those recommendations will be sent to Biden and he'll make some common sense changes to it. Obviously, U.S. taxpayers shouldn't have to support more people on government welfare roles. But at the same time, we shouldn't use poverty guidelines as a way to restrict people from immigrating unless they're millionaires. Mm. Um. With that, the Senate also confirmed Alejandro Mayorkas as Homeland Security Secretary today after Monday night's vote was delayed due to weather. So we now have a head of Department of Homeland Security. And they also confirmed Pete Buttigieg as Biden's Transportation Secretary. He is the first openly gay person ever to win confirmation in a cabinet position. Biden has also, there's a lot of litigation regarding the wall. Biden's Justice Department has asked the Supreme Court to postpone all arguments in significant cases regarding the Trump wall. They are going to end it. They are not going to continue to build it. And so basically everything is moot, pertains to the wall and the litigation of the wall. Besides Groundhog's Day, more probably more, well, not probably, is much more important than Much Day. more important. Yeah, it, is, it is Black History. Very much important. Yeah. Right. Uh, and this At month, least to me it is. Yes, well, it is to me as well. The only one on our crew who it's not as important to is Groundhog Sam. Yeah. Groundhog <laughs> Sam, we say, is, is important, but I think everybody else on the crew would vote Black History Month. Absolutely. And uh, this month is an <laughs> annual celebration of achievements by Black Americans at a time for recognizing their role in United States history. Also known as African American History Month, the event grew out of the Negro History Week, which was created by Carter Woodson and other prominent Black Americans. Since 1976, every United States president has officially designated the month of February as Black History Month, including the punk band, including Joe Biden now. Now, other countries around the world, including Canada and the United Kingdom, also devote their a month in February to celebrate Black History Month. And it's, it starts back from 1915, half a century after the 13th Amendment abolished slavery in the United States. Carter Woodson and a minister, Jesse Moreland, founded the Association 
for the study of Negro life and history. They dedicated to researching and promoting achievements by black Americans and other people of African descent. And known today as the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, the group sponsored a National Negro History Week in 1926, choosing the second week of February to coincide with the birthdays of two famous people. Who? Anybody? Bueller? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Two, two famous, famous people. people coincide with the birthdays of two famous people. One is we're going to celebrate on President's Week next week. That's the more obvious one, Abraham Lincoln. Oh, right. Right, right, Lincoln. Well, I thought you were talking about black people. Well, okay, but no, one white guy and one black guy. Okay. All right. So we got the white guy, Abraham Lincoln. He abolished yes. slavery mm -hmm. and a very well known, famous black man in history as well. And that is uh, Frederick Douglass. Oh, Frederick oh, Douglass. Frederick Douglass, yes. That makes sense. The event inspired schools and communities nationwide to organize local celebrations, establish history clubs, and host performances and lectures. President Gerald Ford, he officially recognized Black History Month in 1976, the first president to recognize that. Gerald Ford took over for Richard Nixon and he called upon the public to seize the opportunity to honor the two often neglected accomplishments of black Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our entire history. Awesome. Your, one of your favorites, Yo-Yo, Stacey Abrams. Yes, Did you I see? saw. Yeah, yes. she has been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize yes. uh, for her work to promote nonviolent change through the ballot box. She is singly credited with um, getting blacks who previously, or, or a lot of minorities, not just wow. black, minorities and, and poor Georgians or people who are in the lower class in Georgia, uh, to get to register to vote. Mm -hmm. And single-handedly, single-handedly uh, is being praised as the woman who delivered the Democratic vote to Biden for the presidential election and single-handedly got the first black Georgian senator elected, elected. As a Democrat, and the first Jewish senator elected as a Democrat. Uh, the first time that Georgia ever voted for the president and two U.S. senators, all Democrat, in one election. So, created history, literally yeah. created that's history. Well, that's so well, like, well-deserved, well-earned. Yeah. That's phenomenal. I'm so now, happy. Now, Lars Holt Brecken, um, he is a member of Norway's parliament. He's the one who nominated her. Uh, he said, Abrams' work follows in Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s footstep in the fight for equality before the law for civil rights. Martin Luther King won in 1964. Now, just because you're nominated doesn't mean you actually get it. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump was nominated. Jared Kushner was nominated this year. Um, so just because you're nominated doesn't mean you get it. Now, prominent people from the United States who formerly won the Nobel Peace Prize include uh, Teddy Roosevelt, President Roosevelt, uh, Jimmy Carter, Barack Obama, and former Vice President Al Gore, and we will find out in October. And here's something else. I don't know if you saw this in the news. What? Black Lives Matter. Just the group yes, was group. also nominated. Now, if anybody, you know, besides wow. Stacey Williams, I, I would be, I, I would be very surprised if Black Lives Matter doesn't, you know, win. I'm yeah, it's huge. Okay, huge. nominated for a 2021 Nobel Peace Prize, uh, and Norwegian Member of Parliament Peter Eady said he nominated the organization because it's bringing forward a new consciousness and awareness about racial justice. Nice. And uh, we have COVID still. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, according to statistics from John Hopkins, now 57 and a half million people have uh, recovered from COVID. 2.2 2 million people have died. In the United States, 26 million people have been diagnosed. 444,000 people have died. I have some good news today. Oh, please give it to us. There are more people as of today for the first time in U.S. history that have been vaccinated against COVID than have gotten COVID. So today, the United States reached 30 million people vaccinated. 
Okay. 26.3 million people have been diagnosed. Oh. It is the first time that we have va- that we have vaccinated more people than have actually gotten it. Nice. Now, despite all of this, January was the deadliest pandemic month in the United States, 95,000 deaths. The previous high was 77,000 in December. And before that, it was 60,000 in April when we were all quarantining. But it is going down now. The rates, the rates are going down. I, and I would say that the rates are going down not because we are doing anything as Americans better, but probably because people are starting to get vaccinated. Right. Absolutely. That would be my guess. I don't know for a fact. And yesterday, the Biden administration announced that they have purchased uh, a deal from the U.S. The US government has purchased $232 million worth of an at-home coronavirus testing kit. The kit, which will be available in July, will give you a result in 15 minutes. This is a game changer. It will give you a result in 15 minutes, whether or not you have COVID and is 95% accurate. Wow. And it's done in 15 minutes. Okay, that's great. The only downside is you can only do it if you have a Bluetooth telephone. So people who do not have access to phones, Wi-Fi, internet will not be able to do it because somehow, I don't know how it works, I'm not a scientist and I haven't read the instructions, but Mm -hmm. somehow you stick something up your nose and you stick it in some liquid and somehow your phone reads it, sends it off to a lab and sends it back. Wow. What is life? Yes, and you need Bluetooth to do it. Wow. And, and they believe that they are going to be able to distribute 500,000 tests per day starting in July through the end of the year. So how would we get it? Like, is it something that you have to get from the hospital or something? I, I don't know the answer to any of uh, these questions yet, but we will find out soon. That's amazing. But what, how I can imagine it's going to be used is if there's a 15-minute test, you're either walking around saying, showing some ID that you have a COVID vaccine or you're getting tested everywhere you walk into before you walk in. That's going to probably be what it is. Really? I would think so. It's 15 minutes. You want to go to a stadium? You want to go to a concert? you got to get tested. Oh, true. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you want to go like, into a club? you got to get tested. Right, right. That's true. Stand outside and we'll call you. We'll text you when, you're, when your test comes back. I, I'm, I'm down for that. And I'm down for that. the counter. Yeah. If, it's, if it's 95%, sure. So the test will be over the counter, so you can buy it at a pharmacy. Counter, right, and you can take it home with you. you look, this, the, re- the first thing that I thought about was just me seeing my family, you know, because I couldn't go to see my family for the holidays. None of us went back home. So, like, that's the first thing I'm, th- I'm thinking about. I'm not even thinking about, like, the concerts and stuff. Just the fact that we can go and buy that and, you know, quarantine and then take that so we know that everybody is safe. I'm here for it. My, my, my parents are 86 and 83. Mm-hmm. Not the healthiest two in the world. And uh, I have not seen them in six months. Wow. Wow. So I'm waiting for them to, you know, and, and I'm not the only person, you know. Uh, there's lots of people who haven't seen their parents. And there's lots of people who had to bury their parents and weren't even able to have a funeral for them. Yeah, that's wild. Because of COVID. So, you know. You know, you know, thank God, you know, at least my parents are still alive. Now, Johnson & Johnson is coming out with a vaccine. It should be coming out in the next week or so. It is 66 if you are taking into account the South African oh. It's 85 against the one that came from China. So why even take that? It's better than zero, and it's only one shot instead of two. And it doesn't have to be in deep freeze of 100 degree weather, uh, minus 100 degrees. So the thing with Moderna and Pfizer is once you take it out of the freezer, you got to use it in six hours or it's done. And Johnson & Johnson can stay on a, on a counter for three months. I don't know how I feel about that. Because it's like if you take that and you want to end up taking the real one to get the 100% or the 90 whatever percent effective one, the Moderna or the Pfizer, like... 
you're just putting all this, all these injections into you. Like I'm already scared of taking one. I'd rather just take the, the one that's more effective. But, but, but let me say this. It is 72% in the United States because the South African virus hasn't made it to the U.S. yet. It was 57% in South it did, Africa. It hasn't? Has, it has, but not to the level of what it is in South Africa. Oh. Okay. Johnson & Johnson one was 50% effective in South Africa, 72% effective in the United States, 85% effective against severe disease, which means that 85 out of 100 people who took it, if they got COVID, don't have to go to the hospital. But I am going to have some tea and it is tea time. We can talk about some tea things. So are you into the Black Panther TV show coming out on Disney? Um, yeah. Are you into yeah. it? Or the yeah, I, I'm, I'm, into any, I'm, in, I'm into anything Black, Brad. Did yeah, that's true. <laughs> <Disney. laughs> I have never heard that. Um, yeah, and at Disney, by the way, they figure out how to how to market. They 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 take a product to market in a hundred different ways. So they're right. Yeah. Yep. Um, so uh, the Black Panther uh, director Ryan Coogler is attached to the uh, Wakanda series as part of a five year deal. Gonna, so it's five years of TV series, no matter what, because they've won five years of it. That's wow. amazing. Yes. Uh, Kugler has released a statement saying that it is an honor to be partnering with the Walt Disney Company, working with them on Black Panther was a dream come true. I wonder if they're going to have the same people from the movie. I uh, doubt it. I yeah. doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it. They probably just use those for the movies. It's just like, you know, all the other movies that come out and they turn into series. Right. They usually don't have the same people from the movies. But um, it, it doesn't matter because that just means it's more work for black actors. Yeah, of course. You know? That's that's amazing. Maybe maybe, maybe you want to try out for a black. Panther. Absolutely. You would be I, a great Black Panther. I, oof, that that's kind of oof, that's that that has that's some shoes to walk I, I'm telling you, you would be a great Black Panther. I, you know, and Brad, I love you for that. I am. Not, <laughs> where, I really is, where is this guy Kugler? Get him on the phone. Okay. Kugler. Get We're, Kugler on the phone. Get Kugler on the phone. Get on the phone and send <laughs> yeah. those tape to him immediately. Immediately, yes. I, I will be good with even being an extra on Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> you have to like, rewind stars. it, rewind it, and play it slow. And it's like that's yo-yo. <laughs> I'm good with that. Right now, 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 if Kugler is in his limousine right now, which I assume he is, yes, NC TV director, mm -hmm. he's turning. Do they still, they, I don't think they use limos anymore, Brad. Really, I know. <laughs> <laughs> when you were painting a picture, yo yo, go on, go okay, on. Okay, go ahead, go I'm ahead. Just, I'm just giving you the picture. His I'm, fancy I'm, I'm expedition. I'm giving you the picture. You know? His picture fancy you know? escalade. There, there you go. His fancy <laughs> escalade being driven around. Yeah. And he goes, Turn me around. I'm going to apartment A. Get me to apartment A. I need this guy. <laughs> wow. That would be a dream. <laughs> That's a dream. Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, you know who's coach now these days? <laughs> Let us know. I heard yeah, about this. Yes. Mike Pence. Former <laughs> Vice President Mike Pence. He's gotten a dose of what it's like to be a real person again. Right. A he, he can wear Air Force sneakers since he's not flying in the Air Force One anymore. Yeah, it's Air Force Two. The vice president flies Air Force Two. <laughs> but since he and his wife don't have the private U.S. government plane anymore, they had to hop aboard American Airlines from St. Croix to Charlotte, North Carolina, and they settled in their very tiny coach seat. Yes, I saw. I saw pictures of uh, them in the airport. Ah, it was Pence. Very loud. They dropped the O. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> the, tea, the, tea, the tea is heavy. The tea yeah, is the tea heavy is today. Very, very heavy. Good tea. <laughs> realize, I don't realize tea. how how how, uh, how uh, loud that was going to be. Yeah, right. Sure. <laughs> right. So I saw. I saw him and uh, his wife sitting in the uh, airport, just like with their mask. And then I was like, "Ooh!" And they got their mask on. So, <laughs> uh huh. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That, now, now you know what it's like, my man. Mm -hmm. now, he's not my man, but you know what it's like, right? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. You're gonna yeah. check out the Wendy Williams Lifetime movie. I live the best life. Oh yes, yes. I didn't get to check it out yet. I I watched the movie. I watched, watched the documentary. 
Because there was a movie first and then the documentary after. Yeah. So, and I know a couple people that have worked with her. So, like, I knew about certain situations. And then watching it come through, I was like, woof. I need to watch juicy. this. Yes, you, you do. The documentary was better than the movie. I'm not going to lie. But the, the movie was still good. And I want to ask the Brass Squad if any of you guys watched any of the Wendy Williams uh, the uh, biopic or the uh, documentary and let us know what you thought about it in the comments. Yeah. So Vanessa, just so you know, the movie and the documentary trace Wendy Williams' life, including her miscarriages, cocaine use, rape, her crumbling marriage to Kevin Hunter, uh, who was the former producer on her talk show, and they were married for 22 years. And then it surfaced that Hunter had fathered a baby with another woman. Wendy Williams says, yes, it did happen because she said in the New York Times Magazine, uh, and I'm quoting Wendy Williams, Kevin has a daughter. And it's not, we have a daughter. Now, Williams uh, has claimed she hopes her biopic uh, makes serial cheater, ex-husband Kevin Hunter, wish he never met her. <laughs> now, documentary flashes back to Williams' hometown of Ocean Township, New Jersey, where a young Wendy struggled with her weight, criticism from her parents, her appearance, her demeanor. As an adult, she describes cocaine as a new diet. And her ex-husband, Kevin Hunter, they were married for, as I said, for more than two decades. They share a son. And when it came to quitting her marriage, Williams says she was methodical and planned her separation uh, for years uh, from her once great love, hoping to minimize damage to the couple's son, Kevin Hunter Jr. and her career. Wow, I can't wait to check that out. I need to check that out. Um, yeah, like one, th one, th one thing about her, even though, you know, she kind of got famous for talking crap about all these other celebrities, I really do respect her hustle just as a black woman. Um, she, she, made she made it. She made it. She said as an adult, she, w she never went over two weeks of not working. Like after she got fired from certain radio stations just for doing what she wanted to do, no, exactly for what she's famous for now that, um, you know, the radio stations uh, did not uh, agree with, especially like talking about uh, plastic surgery. You know, that was taboo back in the day. They right. couldn't even talk about their own plastic surgery. So for her to be muted and, you know, she still found a way like in, in, in one of her, just a quick uh, example, one of her um, clause in the, in the, uh, in the actual, uh, her paperwork said that, you know, cause they, they, they fired her, but they couldn't fire, fire her because she was still under contract. So in the contract, in this fine print and said, you can't work 80 miles, uh, within, within 80 miles of this resident, uh, of the, of the radius. So she went to Philly and that's like the number five, I think top radio station. And right. she literally got the number one show from there and was still collecting the money from New York. Like she's genius. Yep. She was a go getter. So that's why, like, I think Kevin is, he's just a F boy. Like, you know, for him to come and literally use her money, her hard work and money to freaking, you know, spend on some other little chick, like, it's crazy. Well, he doesn't have a very good reputation. No, he doesn't. Well, but he's a hood boy from like Brooklyn. Yeah, we'll just, you know? yeah. And she, she, he was like 23 and she was like 29 when they met. So, like, it was a age difference, you know. But when they met, she was not yet as well, obviously well known what she is now today. No, she she was pretty. Yes, yeah, she was. That's she why. Was. He, yeah, yeah. They met at like a, a party, like a skating thing. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Even Salt and Pepper wanted her to be um one of the uh she they wanted her to be the DJ. Like that's in the eighties. Like right. you know, she was she was big. She was big radio wise. I didn't know that. It wasn't t it wasn't on on TV yet. Mm hmm. You ever watched Saved by the Bell when you were a kid? Oh, what? That broke my heart. That yes, broke Screech my heart. Died. Yes. Yes. Dustin Diamond. He played Screech on Saved by the Bell. He was the uh, dork, you know, mm -hmm. making the dorky faces. And, you know, he was the kid who always locked in the locker. Kept that show fun. Yeah. Yeah. He was fine three weeks ago. It's crazy. Like, it just came out in January that he had stage four. Yeah, he was fine. And then in three weeks, he, he went from being diagnosed with cancer to dead. Yeah, that, that, yeah. that was hard, yeah. Yeah, uh, Diamond shared his news last month. At the time, his manager said this client's health was serious and that Diamond was undergoing further testing. He was an actor. He was a stand-up comedian. He stirred some controversy in 2009 in the book Behind the Bell, 
in which he shared backstage stories about shooting the series with some of his accounts being less than flattering of his co-stars. And he also faced some legal trouble serving three months in jail for stabbing a guy. I didn't even yeah. know this. Yeah, no, he had, he had some troubles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. But you know what also, when you have stage four cancer and you just get diagnosed and die three weeks later, I, I, I mean, I don't know for a fact. I haven't seen his medical records. I, don't, I haven't spoken. You know, I never spoke to the guy in my life. But I got to assume that he was ignoring some, a lot of troubling signs and just ignored it and said, oh, it's nothing, it's nothing, it's nothing. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. You don't, you know, you don't just, you know, all of a sudden get diagnosed with stage four cancer and have no idea that anything was wrong with you. Yeah. Mm. He could have been one of those guys. He could have been one of those guys who are like, oh, something hurts. This looks weird. This feels odd. And it gets worse and worse and worse, and he doesn't do anything about it till it's just so bad that he goes to a doctor and they're like, "Oh, you have stage four cancer," you know? Yeah. Because especially with cancer, you can't you can't ignore those things. You cancer, you catch early. You went you for the most part, not always, but for the most part, you catch cancer early, you live, and for the most part, when you catch cancer late, you die. Well, I mean, he just shared news of it in January. Who knows if he knew before or didn't. I was happy to see that some of his co-stars like Mario Lopez and Mark, who played Zach and Tiffany, who played Kelly, they said some things. They they actually posted about him because I was actually surprised because I, I didn't know if they were going to say anything because with that tell all book, like you said, it wasn't very flattering, you know, um, which is why he wasn't asked back. What? for the reunion. What did he say? I don't even know what he said. I, never I mean, he, he was the nerd. So like, you know, like they were the cute kids. Like you had Lark Voorhees, the black girl who was gorgeous. You had Zach, the the jock, blonde hair. Lopez, you know, you know he, he, he still has that sick body, right? He, he, he's right? still the same, right. Yeah. So like, you know, he, he spoke about like how he was treated different, you know, and how they treated the, his co-star is different. And we said, you know, it wasn't all flattering, uh, some of the stuff that he said about his co-stars. So for them to at least, you know, still show love and, you know, said the whole rest in peace and, you know, shout out to his family. I thought that was big of them as well. But he was, he was a very troubled guy in his adult years. He was did, you have a, did you have a crush on any of them this quick? Same I did. Life. Freaking Lisa Turtle was my girlfriend. Yeah, Lisa freaking turtle. That yeah. what? I had the biggest crush on her, Lark Voorhees. She doesn't really look the same now, but you know, but she was fine. I liked day. the young Mario Lopez, but I loved the older Zach. You liked young uh, Mario, older Zach. Very interesting. <laughs> so you swear. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Next quick, you kind of look like uh Jesse. Like with Jesse. Your with your curly hair. <laughs> Yeah, Jesse, Jesse, the the spicy Latina with the curly hair. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, that was a good show. Thanks for watching. For more Brad Show Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.